<laughs> Another treasure. Now I know, I know that we're building a C10. I'm gonna get some comments that this is actually a Dodge. And you can see that from the cab. Settle down. I think the patina matches nicely and it's eight foot long and there's no holes in it. There's another C10 over there somewhere, but it's missing one fender um, and it's got holes in it. Technically, we can't have holes in our boxes. So I'm gonna put this one on because the C10 is not numbers matching with the Jeremax and the bus frame and the Allison. So oh, it's whatever number you put on it. So she's kind of ready to come off. So we're just gonna cut the little bits that are holding it on. And we're gonna take this home and keep going on our C10 build, which you guys don't realize, but we were actually waiting for today for the okay to come grab this. And today is today. There's a mini bike in here. There's a mini bike? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Get it. Welcome to my new tiny home. <laughs> eh? Nice. Made in Japan. It's all in Japanese too. All right, here she is, 1964 C10. This is a 2015 bus frame. It's already set up for a Duramax, which is great. We're gonna put the Duramax and the two-wheel drive Allison in there, making it a legitimate tow truck. I'd like to see twin turbos on it, just because we're getting two stacks behind the cab. Once I have the string line exactly square and parallel, then we can line up the back to the front. Okay, that looks like a frame. I know there's been a big gap in between the videos, but um, it took me a while to find the bed sides. I really wanted to build the bed next with our vintage tow rig in the back. All right, we got the turret mounted, spins around. That spins, look at that, what a good day. Really wanna thank Lincoln Electric Canada for helping us out with this video as well, for letting us use the Power MIG 260. So we're gonna put that to hard work, making sure that this tow rig doesn't fall off. Here we go. All right, so. Um, we've got our box sitting on our C10 here a little bit. Uh, I love it because the um, length is perfect and the patina matches pretty close. So uh, we're gonna have to tweak the colors a little bit uh, with, uh, we'll just do that with some trim clad and then we'll clear coat the whole thing. But the 10 foot box allows us to uh, shorten the front a little bit and center our wheel in the well perfectly and then the extra we can cut off the back because our frame is a bit shorter while i'm going to be doing that uh, we're going to be sending our harness off to uh, bill of performance mfg manufacturing out in bc he's going to flash the computer for us tune the transmission controller and shorten the harness for our Duramax that's already in here so we can just turn key fire it up uh, we've got a fast fuel system uh, on a truck that came in from Tuesday and we'll be putting that on there. Once we get the box figured out, we can figure out where the fuel tank's gonna go, the air ride's gonna go, uh, whether we're gonna put a stinger on it or not. The uh, tow rig is gonna go in regardless, and then we're gonna make that so we can unhook that easy enough if we don't wanna drive around with the tow rig in it. We'll just put some braces across. We'll put it as low as we can. I don't think I need to customize the inside. I might a little bit, uh, but I really just don't want the wheel well sticking out past the hubs, and they are not and putting it right here um, it doesn't have this sticking out past the side of the cab the wheel wells are out just slightly once we figure out uh, where the box is going to stay and the sizes are right then we can um, figure out what kind of rims and tires we need i also have the airbags for the front so we can do the ride suspension up and down um, so we'll throw those in quick and then um, we can figure out our drive shaft and our air tank and all that fun stuff so uh, let's get into it here we go so I need to cut three inches off of the front to have it tight up against the cab. I'm okay with an inch gap though, because four inches is to here. So that way I can just cut this off. I don't have to drill out all the spot welds. I can just move it over. All the bends will be right. There'll just be an extra layer there. Weld it shut again, quick and dirty. Here we go. All right, that's a good look. I'm happy with that. Drop the box down just a couple inches. Cut about eight and a half inches off the back. I'll cut this one off, 
and then weld that back on again. We'll just drill some holes through the back and then drill that, put the front ones back on again. And uh, it's starting to look like a pickup truck. Okay, so I went to VNR and grabbed some C channel. So we welded what I think is the distance across. And then wouldn't you know it, if I lay it right across, that's the same height as the C's. That's perfect. So one at the front, one at the back. We'll do one right here. Here, I don't know yet. We're gonna do a wood bed. And I'm just going to do uh, barn board. I, I love how quickly it turns like a dark gray and looks like it's been in there for years. So we'll beat it for a little bit. Before we do that, uh, I'm just going to cut the last of this edge off. This is the old box, will be much higher. I don't want to go up and over. I want to keep the tow rig nice and low, as low as possible, so we'll put the drive shaft in. I don't mind the bed being up a bit higher because it does kind of show it off a little bit. So I, I find the best way to, to get these off, like you see the spot wells that where it's tight, I just cut in between and then wiggle it back and forth with a pair of ice grips until it looks something like this. Um, there's a little bit of rot there, which is too bad, but that's underneath the fender. So nobody's ever going to see that. Once I'm happy with the height and everything, then we will put these back on the front and the back. So here we go. Okay, so I have this trimmed. Now I'll make a holder that I can uh, weld something around there um, to bolt this into place that goes just past this ring here. We'll weld that up, um, but I want it as low as possible. The thing that's keeping me from going any lower, it would be the drive shaft. And I've got ears on both ends uh, with no slip yoke coming out of the transmission. So I need a two piece drive shaft. I need 65 inches. Um, this one and this one will give me exactly what I need so I can bolt this U-joint to the transmission and then bolt that one to the diff and then the slip yoke should be enough for my up and down. So as it's down, it'll be all the way retracted. As I go up, it'll slip out a little bit. This one just needs to be shortened so I can cut it and then put it in the lathe, cut this off, slam it in there re-weld it, but I don't feel like doing that right now. So I'm just going to put a piece of ratchet strap from ear to ear that'll give me my highest point. And then I can figure out how to uh, mount the hoist, which will allow me to put the box in place from my rails, because I don't want the rails in the way. I gotta do this end and then get into the tailgate. I gotta mount these things one thing at a time. It'd be neat to see the box in the back, but um, not today. So here we go. Okay, so the turret has to go in front of this uh, main brace. I have an identical one to it, which I'll put right here. I might cut this flush and then weld the two together. I'm gonna cut a five and five eighths hole in there to accept this pipe right in the middle. That will be welded to the top of this. So this unit will be 100% attached to the truck and nothing else. We can weld this in place to the right height, but um, it is pretty critical that we get it straight. That's not bad, that little bit. Good, good thing welder covers that up, but we'll just tack it in place on both sides. Make sure that it's uh, level straight up and down. Okay, so we've got the frames tacked in place. Uh, basically the only way to make sure that that's centered because the tires aren't the same size and different tires, different air pressures is we're gonna have to level the frame again front and back, side to side, and then we can stick the level inside the pipe and then level it. Uh, we'll weld it a little bit more solid and then boom our jig right back in again. All right, we got the turret mounted. 
spins around, that spins, look at that, what a good day. Now I need to take this thing off from here. They welded this solid and, and is holding this, but I'm taking these right off because we are mounting our boom on this one and it needs to spin inside the caps here. So I just need to cut them off from here in a delicate manner. Then we can knock these sides off. I'm going to move them ahead just slightly. I think I can put the winch just a touch closer. Um, once I have this off, I can swing my uh, locks back into place. All right, had a little bit of camera issue, so we went ahead a little bit, but I'll catch you guys right up. I've centered my C channel, which just happened to be the right height to go over top of our arches, um, and then just drilled a hole and put a half inch bolt on both sides. So centered it um, left to right, and that'll position our box sides properly. Um, did another one on the front here, and then because this is up higher because I dropped the frame, we had to weld a little angle bracket up there to hold it to the right length. Now, originally I was going to put the C-channel this way, but when I put um, the boom in place and put the extension on there all the way in, that flexes quite a bit, and I can see that flexing a little bit. So instead, I cut these, and they are going to go in between the bed sides. So they're gonna get bolted in like that. So I made a plate, I'll drill the holes in here, I'll mark the holes here and in the back, and then we'll bolt those in between. Now, that is just sitting in the um, that pipe, or the turret, whatever, is just sitting in a pipe right now. It's not actually bolted in. So uh, I cut this plate. Um, this is a half inch plate with three quarter inch holes. Uh, this will fit a round um, the pipe and then get bolted to these ones. Uh, so I, I made it so we can still remove the box and all we have to do then is unbolt the frames here. Now it's sturdy this way. When we weld it solid, it'll be sturdy this way if we want to swing the boom over to the side and pick somebody out of the ditch or something. Um, either way, this will be plenty strong. But for now, we're going to take the turret back out again, take the box sides off and start welding everything solid. So to weld all the heavy stuff together on the tow rig, we're gonna be using our Lincoln 260 power MIG. When we get into the body steel, we'll be using the 140. There's my white shop kitty. Oh, I think she feels that winter's coming. And it's getting warm in the shop. Right, kitty? Right? Anyway, I had these bars laid out in place. And then I had my plate on top. I marked all of the holes. And now I am going to weld the nut and the plate on the back of this. I'm gonna weld the nut solid and then tack this plate in place. Um, that way if it cracks loose or if these ever strip, even though they're grade eight, I can slide this plate out. It's gonna be tricky because it's on top of there. I've got room though to slide them out. So that's why just a quick tack. If it does get loose, uh, I could make a cage for around it, but I'll just tack it for now. Right, kitty, you need some attention too. Okay, so I've beveled this in so that I can lay a bead of weld nicely right in there without coming too far out because this is going to lay right here. See if those holes line up. Uh, the bolts, I'm gonna have to get a lock washer for it because these bolts just hit this. They're, they're scooch, scooch too long. I mean, this is the first time I've done this. And as in all TV, everything goes perfect the first time around. Look at that. Yeah, I might have to take the grinder just a hair right off there. But that gives me a nice little, little groove on the inside there to lay a bead. So we'll lay that, we'll put that on top. And then I need to tack just temporarily that to this thing. Oh, I guess I could just weld solid. Under the top, eh? Yeah. Um, anyway, I can't reach well there. So, can I? I guess so. Because that will come off. I can weld it twice. Oh, sweet. Yeah. 
I'll grind this off clean because this can get welded and then it'll get welded underneath. This is where that, uh, I just put that taper. So um, it should be super duper strong. That'll never come out ever. Um, but I need to make sure that this is pointing straight out the back because these pins, because they're offset, um, it has a pretty good radius, but I'd hate to be driving and have the thing just a little crooked. That's no good. So here we go. So I just took the turret off. Now I can weld this solid. Set the welder to half inch. Give her. I'm only gonna do little pieces at a time because I don't want the whole plate to warp and then my bolt holes not line up again. All right, this was the only angle iron available for our turret. The winch is going to sit right on top of this. I just need to raise it up enough to clear this. Drill the holes in there to line it up. I cut a slot in there just like the old one was. Uh, knock the old one off, weld this one on. Um, I think this is cast, but basically with the slit in there, we're just trying to keep it from flipping up like that. So um, it just has to stay in place, hold it together more or less. We'll space this out, bolt it on, and then we can put it back on the turret. Here we go. All right, I don't know about the stack. Let me know about the stack. Anyway, we're gonna grab the table saw. We're gonna rip two inches off of each one and then they'll all be 10 inches spaced nice and equal. That'll do it for this episode of the C10. I got a lot done, but I got a lot left to do. Uh, I really want to mount these bed sides 100% perfect, but there's no point because to pull the bed off, I need to take the tow rig off. And it's kind of a pain to do that. It's much easier to just not attach these sides right now so I can hook up the fuel lines, the air lines, the brake lines, the wiring, drive shaft, all that fun stuff. Bill of Performance Manufacturing is building the harness right now as we said in the beginning of the video so I kind of want to get the thing running is, is kind of the next step um, so we'll be mounting the fuel tank the fuel lines next get ready to figure out how we can get a Germax to run on its own and make it as easy as a swap as it comes in pile of good stuff coming up that doesn't mean that we stop working on projects uh, the cat is at the machine shop right now um, I do need some more parts it's not that we abandon projects it's that we work on them at the right time when it makes the most sense. Um, as it is right now, I can pick my rims and tires because I got the stands kind of figured out. Um, we can get going on the air ride system, start ordering those parts, and as those parts come in, um, when I have a big chunk, you'll see another video. Uh, this truck will be running before you see any real videos on the cat, unfortunately. We want those videos a little closer together than these videos on the C10 was. But uh, thanks to Lincoln for giving us that welder to put this all together. Without support from companies like that, we wouldn't be able to do all the, the fun stuff that we can. I get ex really excited about this. As fun as the GTO is driving around, I love the welding, I love the fabricating, I love taking something, making it work, making it functional again, and making it a one of a kind. And you can do that as well. They're not abandoned, they never will be. I want to finish what I start. Um, there's Mercedes stuff coming down the line. See, no Mercedes. Huh? <laughs> and uh, lots of good stuff coming. So thanks for watching. Remember, if you're not filthy, you're not rich. Here we go.